peace be upon you. Uh, welcome uh, to you all uh, to this conference uh, held at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies and organized by the Iranian Studies uh, Unit. This is the fifth uh, session of this conference. Uh, we shall address the issue of Iran, the U.S. and Israel. The principal three parties uh, of the uh, general political hot kind of uh, uh, debate uh, that goes on, which uh, uh, summons uh, analysis uh, and uh, indeed uh, uh, strategic wise, uh, these three uh, parties uh, uh, shall have a uh, uh, huge impact uh, on the region. So, these uh, days uh, we are kind of uh, talking about uh, these three uh, influential parties, uh, not only that, uh, but perhaps. Uh, on the long run, uh, their impact uh, will be pretty much uh, uh, palpable. Uh, this uh, session is uh, important uh, indeed. Uh, we have two distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, they have uh, great contributions uh, to this uh, dossier. Mr. Uh, Mahmoud Muharib and Mr. Uh, Jodat Bahjat. And they are both uh, insightful uh, uh, speakers, uh, uh, great panelists. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Muharib uh, will be focusing on a specific sensitive issue, i.e. the potential perhaps uh, return of compliance to the JCPOA and the uh, Israeli kind of uh, uh, choices. Gaudat Bahjat, yes. Gaudat Bahjat or Jaudat Bahjat. We'll be talking about uh, the roots uh, of uh, belligerence uh, between the USA and uh, Iran and the national interests uh, of uh, the two. And he uh, will be talking about the intensity of uh, such. Uh, Bellico's uh, positions uh, uh, on the part of the two parties, uh, and uh, he uh, uh, will be talking about uh, a potential understanding between the two. Uh, we shall allocate uh, 20 minutes for uh, for each, uh, and then we'll open the floor uh, for questions and answers for 30 minutes. Uh, we'll start with Mahmoud uh, Muharib. Uh, please. The floor is yours, uh, and his uh, paper is entitled Israel and the Iran's Nuclear Program. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. I'll be talking about uh, Israel and uh, uh, the Iranian nuclear uh, program. I shall uh, speak at a reasonable pace. Uh, so that uh, the interpreters can uh, convey it into English uh, faithfully. Israel, uh, since uh, its establishment in 1948, uh, began to put uh, pl uh, put plans uh, to possess uh, a uh, nuclear weapon, and two decades later, with the help of France and other countries, uh, uh, was capable of uh, uh, producing nuclear weapons, and it has become the only party in the Middle East uh, uh, that uh, possesses uh, a nuclear weapon. Uh, it has monopolized uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind of craft and uh, prevented others uh, from obtaining uh, nuclear weapons uh, by resorting to military force. Indeed, uh, this uh, has become part and parcel of its uh, national securities uh, uh, theory. In 1981, it uh, destroyed the Iraqi uh, nuclear plant, uh, and in 2007, it uh, also attacked Syria. And since uh, the manufacturing of the nuclear weapon, it uh, uh, has uh, 
refined its uh, capabilities uh, and uh, it uh, uh, has become uh, a nuclear power. It has a, a command and control center to manage any nuclear weapons uh, warfare. Uh, it has the monopoly over the nuclear weapon, as we said, uh, and uh, two uh, decades ago, it had put the uh, Iranian nuclear uh, program at the top of its uh, priorities. Uh, 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 this has uh, become uh, uh, the kind of uh, motive uh, to uh, impose uh, crippling sanctions on Iran. Iran illustrated the fact that if the sanctions uh, would uh, be unsuccessful, then uh, Israel might uh, resort to power, or America uh, for that matter. Iran indeed, uh, or rather Israel, uh, has uh, uh, amassed the international community behind its position and uh, it uh, reiterated uh, that the Iranian uh, nuclear program uh, poses a threat uh, to its uh, very existence. Uh, however, the academic uh, and security-related think tanks uh, and the Israeli officials' statements uh, refute uh, such allegation and confirm the following. Uh, Israel confirms the following. I Iran uh, becoming a nuclear power does not threaten Israel because uh, the uh, nuclear capabilities of Israel to uh, launch perhaps uh, an attack uh, is uh, feasible and at hand. Israel opposes uh, the nuclear the Iranian nuclear program because uh, uh, if Iran becomes a nuclear power, it uh, uh, will reshuffle kind of the cards uh, in the region and it uh, will uh, prevent uh, Israel from spreading its tentacles in the region and it uh, shall entrench uh, the clout of Iran and its allies in the region. Third, Iran, that's, that's what Israel is uh, saying. This is the reading of, of Israel. Uh, thirdly, uh, Iran uh, aims uh, uh, at um, achieving two uh, issues. First, uh, protecting the regime from any foreign interference and uh, entrenching its clout uh, and hegemony in the region. And it is uh, uh, worth mentioning that uh, the uh, nuclear Iranian threat uh, has been put at the top of the priorities of Israel. Uh, this conforms uh, to Israel's strategy vis-a-vis -vis the Arab world and Palestine. Israel claims that uh, its occupation uh, of uh, the Palestinian territory and Arab territories is not the problem. However, a nuclear Iran uh, uh, constitutes a threat uh, to the Arabs. Uh, and uh, in order to uh, uh, face this uh, uh, challenge, uh, Arab, the Arabs uh, uh, must normalize their relationships uh, with Israel. Not only that, uh, but boost their relationships uh, uh, so that they, they become allies. But at the same time, Israel refuses uh, the Arab Peace Initiative. Uh, it Judaizes uh, the uh, uh, Palestinian territories and annexes uh, some of it. Uh, Israel has uh, opposed uh, the uh, JCPOA in 2015, and any agreement uh, with Iran that does not stop uh, it from becoming a nuclear power. Netanyahu had a showdown with uh, Obama, and uh, he uh, liaised or rather extended bridges with Mr. Trump and uh, influenced him to withdraw from the JCPOA in 2018 and uh, imposing further international and American sanctions on Iran. Uh, there is an issue that is very important uh, and we need to take it into consideration. Israel has been confounded, uh, strategically speaking, uh, during the last two years. Uh, Netanyahu, Netanyahu's position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, nuclear Iranian uh, 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 dossier uh, 
uh, depended on erroneous hypotheses uh, following the Trump's uh, uh, maximum pressure campaign believed that these sanctions will lead to the collapse of the Iranian regime or compelling it uh, to dispense with uh, the uh, 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 nuclear ambitions. However, if this uh, doesn't happen, Mr. Trump uh, shall destroy the Iranian facilities. However, Netanyahu's hypothesis uh, were flimsy and Israel uh, has been uh, uh, shaken kind of strategically and this uh, uh, was the result of uh, the following uh, reasons. First, the withdrawal of the Trump's administration from the JCPOA and uh, the coming of a new one that wants uh, mutual compliance. Uh, the other issue is uh, the further enrichment of uranium on the part of the Iranians. Uh, third, uh, Iran has weathered the storm of the sanctions, albeit with difficulties. Uh, fourth, uh, the Israeli uh, military op has been weakened uh, because Israel has not been ready militarily uh, to attack uh, the uh, Iranian facilities successfully. The strategic Israeli assessment uh, uh, by uh, the uh, I think a famous think tank in Tel Aviv uh, provided us uh, with four scenarios. Uh, and these uh, scenarios are as follows. Uh, first, uh, uh, the mutual uh, compliance uh, uh, on the short uh, run. Uh, uh, second, uh, the continuation of negotiations for months uh, without uh, acknowledging the failure. Thirdly, to arrive at a transitional uh, uh, kind of agreement, uh, and fourth, uh, uh, reaching a stalemate uh, and imposing further sanctions on Iran in accordance with the strategic assessment. Uh, the fourth scenario is the worst, uh, because even if uh, the USA imposes more sanctions on Iran, uh, it is highly probable that uh, the sanctions will not be impactful, because Iran has adapted itself uh, uh, to these sanctions. Uh, the strategic assessment's findings is as follows. Uh, Israel, uh, oh, it would have been better for Israel to have a new kind of JCPOA, uh, the like of the JCPOA, uh, prior to the withdrawal and uh, pressurizing the USA to amend it. And the report said that uh, mutual compliance uh, will allow Israel to have alternatives to prepare perhaps for a military solution. Within the context of dealing with the Iranian ambitions and clout, Israel has repeatedly attacked Iranian targets inside Iran, in Iraq, and in Syria. And these attacks have increased in unprecedented fashion last year. And these attacks are described as military uh, operations or security operations uh, without acknowledging them on the part of Israel in order to achieve uh, 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 Israel's targets without uh, 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 a fully-fledged war. The head of the chief of staff in June in Israel, uh, the third circuit has been uh, established uh, under the umbrella of the chief of the staff. And this division's uh, task is to put a comprehensive strategy to face Iran and to crystallize uh, uh, military plans uh, within the context of the battle between wars uh, opposing the nuclear dossier and uh, opposing the Iranian regime, attacking military targets inside Iran and in the region, especially in Syria. Uh, this indeed uh, uh, what we have witnessed uh, in the last year extensively. Uh, despite uh, uh, the fact that Iran has crossed the red line uh, drawn by Israel. Israel uh, currently, in accordance with the military institution, uh, Israel does not possess uh, the military capabilities uh, to launch uh, uh, an impactful uh, military attack against the Iranian facilities, uh, let alone having uh, an international legitimacy or a green light uh, from the Americans. Uh, 
In addition to that, uh, the decision makers in Israel uh, believe that attacking the nuclear Iranian facilities uh, might lead to a war between the two, whereby Hezbollah will be an influential actor and perhaps uh, other Iranian affiliates. Uh, and Israel is not ready for a war Hezbollah participates in, especially uh, when it comes to the lack of preparations of their land troops uh, uh, if a war uh, is to be waged. Uh, a number of uh, former uh, military commanders uh, in Israel uh, uh, understood uh, the importance of putting uh, a major Israeli strategy against Israel and to refine it uh, and so that it uh, emanates from the fact that uh, the military choice uh, would, st would still be on the table and for uh, Israel to polish its skills uh, and capabilities uh, for such scenario against Iran or an against any country that has nuclear ambitions in the region. And this strategy hinges on the following. Uh, first, uh, as I said, building the cap capabilities uh, and acquiring modern advanced uh, weapons from America so that Israel can launch an attack on its own uh, Building such uh, military capabilities uh, would uh, increase uh, would increase the uh, uh, deterrence, the Israeli deterrence, and might lead to taking steps against Israel. It will entrench the position of Israel, and it will also uh, consolidate the relationship with the United States of America. Third, to be prepared to. Uh, uh, launch a war against Hezbollah without uh, uh, fearing the consequences. Uh, and then there are certain other uh, 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 pinpoints uh, whereby Israel uh, ought to, uh, as I said, consolidate uh, the military choice, uh, including uh, th the uh, 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 consolidation of uh, Israel's relationships uh, with Egypt, Jordan, and the GCC countries. Uh, having an Israeli, Arab, U.S. Uh, uh, military alliance, uh, Mr. Trump uh, has uh, floated the idea of the uh, deal of the century. Uh, Israel later on didn't stop at uh, having a normalization kind of uh, relationships uh, with the Arabs. However, it had floated the idea of having an alliance uh, with Gulf countries and other countries uh, to uh, face uh, Iran. The uh, Naqab uh, summit took place uh, and uh, the aim was uh, to arrive uh, at this uh, alliance. Uh, indeed, the Israeli military institution uh, has uh, spoken. Yan Zamir, the general, uh, had uh, uh, a prolonged study in July uh, 2022 uh, at the Washington Middle East think tank uh, called uh, upon Israel to extend the bridges with the moderate uh, Arab countries and the USA to have an alliance against Iran, not just uh, uh, to prevent uh, Iran from becoming a nuclear power, but also to uh, perhaps uh, uh, cut off the tentacles of uh, uh, Iran in the region. Uh, the issue of the Israeli military attack against uh, the facilities of uh, uh, Iran. The uh, Israeli leaders uh, prefer for the United States of America on its own or with Israel to attack uh, the nuclear Iranian facilities uh, uh, because the United States of America can do so for days and weeks uh, until uh, the nuclear Iranian facilities perish without toppling the regime. But Israel still wants to topple the regime in Tehran. The Israeli thinkers think that uh, indeed this uh, uh, might uh, uh, take place uh, if Israel is ready militarily. However, there are uh, uh, huge challenges uh, that uh, Israel encounters uh, uh, following this scenario, and I'll touch upon some of them. First, uh, 
Uh, these challenges uh, uh, make uh, the military attack uh, uh, indeed untenable or very difficult. Uh, first, uh, the uh, distance uh, to the tune of uh, 1,200 and 1,500 kilometers. Uh, uh, second, uh, the, spo uh, the, the sporadic uh, 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 nature of the distribution of these facilities, more than 14 uh, of them. And uh, uh, fourth, uh, they are very fortified uh, underground, uh, and uh, there are advanced uh, S-300 uh, uh, defense capabilities uh, that defend such sites. Uh, fifth, uh, hundreds of uh, Israeli uh, jet fighters, the F-35, F-15, F-16, and drones uh, must participate in such attack. And it is uh, uh, very difficult not to discover uh, such uh, military. Yes, please. You have only four minutes left. And could you just uh, speak at a reasonable pace so that the interpreter can follow you? That's the moderator. That's what the moderator is saying. So here we talk about F-35, F-16, F-15, and uh, other uh, drones. Uh, and uh, uh, it is very difficult for these uh, 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 jet kind of uh, fighters not to be discovered by the Iranians uh, before they strike. Uh, sixth. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, attack necessitates uh, an international legitimacy or an American legitimacy, uh, uh, at least. Uh, so coordinating with the U.S. is very important, and it is not feasible for Israel to attack without uh, notifying the United States of America and without having a, uh, a green light or, let, or perhaps an amber light uh, to do so. So Israel might uh, uh, launch an attack if uh, uh, the United States uh, and uh, the Iranians reach uh, a cool desac or a stalemate. Uh, uh, seventh, uh, attacking the uh, nuclear Iranian facilities uh, will definitely lead uh, to a war uh, between Israel and Iran including uh, Hezbollah and perhaps uh, the Iranian-backed militias in Yemen and in Syria. And uh, Israel is not ready for such a fully-fledged war uh, because uh, the internal front uh, is not ready for that, especially the land forces. Uh, uh, the land forces uh, are not ready to... Uh, uh, launch a war against Hezbollah because Hezbollah has uh, 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 precise uh, missiles capabilities. Uh, eighth, uh, Iran and Hezbollah might also uh, target strategic Israeli uh, uh, targets uh, in a reciprocal kind of way. So the nuclear Israeli facilities uh, and other strategic facilities might be targeted, uh, and uh, uh, this might lead to a catastrophe. Uh, ninth, uh, it is it is not guaranteed for Israel to inflict huge damage on the Iranian facilities, especially the ones that are located underground. And tenth, if a would-be Israeli attack is 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 unsuccessful. And if the damage uh, is not huge, uh, uh, Israel uh, will uh, find huge difficulties uh, to uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 amass the support uh, from the international community uh, to uh, solve this problem. So uh, uh, the, uh, Iran uh, is dealing with this dossier politically. And if Israel is to be at Attacking, then Iran might uh, kind of uh, uh, dispense with the compliance and uh, expedite its uh, uh, nuclear uh, program. In conclusion, Israel uh, opposes uh, the mutual compliance to the JCPOA. However, Israel has uh, no genuine uh, choices uh, uh, to uh, uh, confront uh, the uh, Iranian 
in uh, nuclear uh, program. Israel is not ready to uh, confront Iran and Hezbollah at the same time. And the international community, the USA, uh, do not want uh, uh, war. Uh, and uh, they exclude uh, the military solution uh, uh, and uh, uh, whether uh, there is uh, a mutual compliance to the JCPOA sooner or later I think Israel will still be determined on shedding light on the uh, nuclear Iran and it uh, shall put it uh, at the top of its priorities because uh, it serves uh, its uh, strategy and uh, the continuation of the monopoly of the uh, nuclear uh, weapons uh, and especially the other strategy uh, that uh, aims not only at uh, normalizing the relationships with the moderate Arab countries uh, but uh, to reach perhaps an alliance with the Arabs against uh, uh, Iran at the same time. And as we know, Israel refuses uh, the Arab uh, peace initiative uh, and it Judaizing the land of Palestine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud Muharib. Dr. Muharib uh, has six books. Uh, and many peer-reviewed papers uh, in Israeli studies and the Israeli-Arab conflict. Uh, and uh, it was a very thorough and rich paper, especially the 10 points that he has raised. Now we move to Dr. Bahgat Gaudet. You have 20 minutes, please. For your question, at the end of my presentation, I will ask you some questions. But uh, in the beginning, I have to say uh, I work for United States Department of Defense, and by law, I have to say everything I say is my own opinion, does not represent United States government or Department of Defense policy. Uh, the fact that United States and Iran uh, have been uh, against each other, the relations between U.S. and Iran is characterized by uh, mutual uh, hostility uh, since uh, 1979, since 1980, the two countries have not had diplomatic relations, and uh, the two countries accuse each other of everything, and uh, I believe probably only Cuba uh, has uh, had longer sanctions than Iran. Even the Soviet Union, uh, United States had diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union, with Iran. Uh, U.S. government uh, has not been on the ground in Iran, and because of this, uh, there are limitations on how uh, the two countries know each other. Uh, the current perceptions is very negative. Uh, in uh, United States, uh, most people in the government believe that uh, the Iranian government lies, cheats, uh, all kind of accusations. On the Iranian side, uh, yesterday, uh, Hossein Mouzavi told us how uh, the Supreme Leader has the final word in foreign policy. Uh, the Supreme Leader uh, basically uh, perceives uh, United States as uh, U.S. does not accept the Islamic Revolution. In, in my mind, it's very much kind of racism. If you do not accept me because of the color of my skin, there is no point talking to you. As far as I understand, uh, Ayatollah Khamenei perceives United States, U.S. does not accept the Islamic Revolution. It is not the nuclear issue. Ayatollah said if it was not the nuclear issue, there will be other issues. It is basically U.S. does not accept who we are. And uh, Ayatollah was very reluctant to give the green light to Rouhani to, and Zarif to negotiate. Uh, it is interesting, uh, President Trump reinforced 
what Ayatollah Khamenei has been saying by withdrawing from the nuclear deal. Basically, Ayatollah Khamenei said, I told you so. You cannot trust the United States. So uh, the perception is very negative on the two sides. Uh, the, the conflict between United States and Iran is not about ideology. It is not the Islamic uh, revolution. Uh, I, I am strong believer in political geography, geopolicy. Uh, as you all know, Iran was about 80 million people, very large country, very strong national identity. Iran perceives itself as the regional power. Uh, there is theory in international relations basically says the superpower, the global power, always has problem with the dominant regional power. Probably one example outside the, the Persian Gulf, like in South Asia, uh, United States is the superpower, China is the main regional power, in order to contain China, United States has strong ties with Japan, the second uh, s most important regional power. In the Persian Gulf, uh, Iran is a dominant regional power, United States is a superpower, Saudi Arabia is the second strongest regional power, so US builds relationship with Saudi Arabia to contain Iran. The problem with this theory, it is very much in Cold War mentality. Domination in the 21st century uh, is different from the 20th century. Uh, I, I don't believe Iran is after exporting the revolution. Uh, the Iranian leaders understand, like in any country, they will stay in power as long as they meet the economic expectations of their people. I, I do not believe Iran is trying to dominate the region or export revolution. Again, the Iranian leaders, like leaders in any country, try to pursue the interests of their people, try to create jobs, try to uh, build bridges with their, their neighbors so they can grow, their economy can grow. So, uh, I believe this theory I, m I mentioned its roots in 20th century. It does not work in the 21st century. Uh, looking for the future, how, how to overcome this mistrust, I believe the uh, United States has to accept that the Islamic Revolution is here, to, the Islamic Republic is here to stay. When I uh, give talks in United States to uh, U.S. officials or think tanks, uh, still they, they have hard time accepting this. And when I say uh, the Iranian government is here to stay, they try to correct me. You mean the Iranian people? We don't have problem with the Iranian people. It is not only the Iranian people. It is the Iranian government. Iran has been under tremendous pressure and the Iranian government survived. In 1980, the Iran-Iraq war, the whole world was against the Iranian government. The Iranian government survived. In the last two, three years, Iran has survived COVID and Iran has been the most sanctioned country in the world. This shows that the Iranian government is here to stay, and the United States has to accept this. Uh, for, for Iran, uh, Iran has to accept that the United States is major global power. From yesterday till today, we heard in, in many presentations talks about China and Russia. From American perspective, Russia is declining global power and China is rising global power. China is the main trade partner to almost all countries in the region and uh, around the world. But till today, 
about 64% of central bank reserves, reserves are in dollars. You cannot deny that United States is major player. Ameri Iranian leaders try to downplay the significance of United States. It is understandable, but uh, Iranian economy, according to IMF and the World Bank, has grown uh, last year and is projected to grow this year by, I think, like 2.3%. But Iran has been able to survive, but it cannot reach its potential without reaching agreement with the United States and Europe. The fact, it is fact that the United States uh, has tremendous economic power, and uh, we talked about soft power before, and military power. Uh, Iran has to find some way to lower tension with Israel. Uh, I know this is very hard, but uh, Israel has very special relationship with the United States. Uh, as my colleague mentioned, when Israel uh, opposed the nuclear deal, it was the first time ever in American history that prime minister of foreign country came and spoke to the Congress against sitting uh, president, United States and Israel have very relationship, very strong relationship. In my mind, I believe Iran will be in better shape if it follows the Turkish model. Uh, president Erdogan uh, could not stand Prime Minister Netanyahu, but uh, Israel is not major focus of Turkish policy. Uh, I mean, I understand Israel is accused of assassinating many people in Iran and many other crimes, but it will be uh, good for Iran, for the region, if somehow uh, Iran finds a way to lower tension with uh, Israel. Very important point, and I talked with uh, very senior Iranian official about it. I asked him because it was under Chatham House, so I will not mention his name, but he's sen very senior Iranian diplomat. Uh, I asked why Iran does not lobby in the United States. And his answer was, there is no political will in Tehran. Iran cannot advance its policy, its relationship with the United States without lobbying. Lobbying is legal in the United States. Almost all countries in the world uh, lobby, uh, hire professional lobbyists, and try to change American policy and to move American policy in their direction. Iran does not for good reasons. But you cannot win if you do not play. Iran has to invest in changing the American public opinion, changing American government and the Congress. Iran has very few friends in Washington. Okay. Uh, how many is it? Okay. Just a few words about the nuclear uh, weapons, uh, b because the assumption in the first presentation that Iran is trying to make the nuclear bomb. One of my books is about nuclear proliferation in the Middle East, and what I found in writing this book the main reason for countries around the world to make the bomb is security. Another major reason is pride. Uh, it's part of Iranian culture to invest in education, and the Iranians are very proud of their technological advances. Iranian universities, even under sanctions, are among the best in the Middle East. And for Iran, the, the nuclear project is very much like putting men on the moon for the United States. And uh, I, I believe it is very important to take this into consideration pride. I, I, I strongly believe Iran is not interested in making the bomb. Uh, in my mind, 
nuclear bomb is like expensive car, you leave it in the parking lot and you never use it. A nuclear bomb was used only once in world history. It is very hard to imagine any scenario under which Iran would use nuclear bomb. I mean, Israel, Israel and the Palestinians live side by side. You cannot separate them. Iran will never use nuclear weapons against Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, I believe the Iranian leaders, when they deny having interest in making uh, nuclear weapons, instead I, they brag about cyber, about uh, drones, about missiles. They display them and they use them. They, they are cheap and this is what, what they do and they show the whole world. And there is so much focus on uh, nuclear weapons and uh, again, uh, the Iranians understand that uh, nuclear weapons lost their values. I mean, even if you, if you make the argument that a country like North Korea has survived because it has nuclear weapons, if I were Iranian or if I were advising the Iranian government, it is much better to follow South Korea than North Korea. Uh, governments survive if they meet the economic expectations of their people, not if they make nuclear weapons. Uh, the way forward, where to go from now with regard to US-Iran relationship. In the short term, uh, I'm not optimistic. There is so much bad blood between the two countries, even if today or tomorrow or this week they sign nuclear agreement. Uh, as I mentioned, there is zero trust between them. But in the long run, I believe there is good opportunity for mutual understanding. Uh, at the end, uh, United States is major global power, and at the end, Iran is major regional power. There will not be stability in the Middle East and probably in the entire world without some working relationship between United States and Iran. There was good chance when President Obama was in office, he showed respect to Iran, but uh, with uh, President Trump was drawing from the deal, uh, this trust is zero again. But again, in the long run, I believe there is good chance for mutual respect. Thank you. Uh, shukran jazilan, uh, Dr. Jawdat Bahjat. Uh, Dr. Jawdat. Uh Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Jawdat uh, Bahjat. He is a professor of national security affairs at the National Defense uh, University's Near East South Asia Center for Strategic Studies. Uh, we have uh, 25 minutes uh, for to receive your questions and answering them. Please, uh, uh, could you ask your questions uh, succinctly and uh, directly, please? Uh, shukran jazila discussions uh, I, I learned a great deal um, uh, professor bakhad i have a question uh, there's a very famous speech by khamenei in the city of yazd where he says if it is in the interest of the islamic republic i will establish relations with the united states and uh, he used he refers to the notion of maslahat or interest um, but in the U.S., as you aptly mentioned, um, uh, not just in the official government discourse, but also in the public, uh, in the popular culture, Iran has an incredibly negative uh, image. It's now the only um, uh, country or the only nationality where it's permissible to discriminate against, at least in the media, in TV, in 
And so the narrative is very Iranophobic. What do you see as the prospects, or besides the lobbying, which you rightly mentioned, what else needs to happen for that narrative in the United States to change uh, in relation to Iran? Shukran. Thank you. Uh, I have one question to Mr. Mahmoud and one question to Mr. Javdat. Uh, my first question to Mr. Mahmoud. Uh, you mentioned that it's one of the choices for Israel to conduct uh, military airstrikes to Iranian nuclear facilities. And uh, my question is that, uh, as far as I know, uh, it is not that easy for um, Israel to attack uh, Iranian nuclear facilities like in Iraq during the Saddam era because it, uh, Iranian nuclear facilities are lo located in the deep down of Iran. This, those are very uh, hard places to reach and, and uh, Israel needs uh, special aircrafts to refuel uh, those aircrafts in the air uh, because it's so long from Israel to attack Iran and Israel doesn't have such aircrafts, and USA doesn't give those airplanes to uh, Israel. And uh, in this case, in potential airstrikes, uh, how can Israel uh, solve this issue? And uh, my question to Mr. Javdat is that you mentioned about uh, Iran's lobbying in USA, and uh, but uh, as I know, uh, many people uh, claim that. Uh, Iranian um, kind of uh, liberal liberal opposition uh, circles, academics, and media figures, they are lobbying for Iran. They are pushing uh, USA to uh, deal with Iran, to relieve sanctions, uh, not to be so hard uh, towards Iran. And what do you think about this? Thank you. Thank uh, the two speakers, Amjad Jibri, the Palestinian researcher, Dr. Mahmoud. I'd like to ask you, do you think uh, that Israel might coexist with a nuclear Iran if America accepts a nuclear Iran? Do you think that Israel will do so? And uh, what about uh, the status of Israel if Iran becomes nuclear? And add to that, if there is a, a third intifada, a third uprising, if Israel is entangled with uh, the internal affairs. Dr. Jordan, uh, do you think that the NPT in the Middle East uh, is effective? Would it be possible indeed to prevent Iran from becoming nuclear? Algeria and Saudi Arabia as well and other countries. So do you think that the NPT is influential? Last question. Do you think that uh, the uh, nuclear Iranian program is uh, to do with uh, having a burger chip uh, so that uh, the regime can, can be entrenched in Iran? I have two comments. First, on Iran, Israel, and the nuclear. I have always uh, advocated no nuclear bomb in Iran dismantling Israeli nuclear bomb and stability for Middle East with nuclear weapon free zone. However, there is another international theory. Kenneth Waltz, you know him, one of the top international relations scientists on international relations, wrote an article in 2012 in Foreign Affairs 
saying uh, why Iran should get nuclear bomb. And he presented a theory, nuclear balancing would mean stability. And he has explained if Iran gets nuclear bomb, this would mean stability in the Middle East. And he says none of the Arab countries in a position, only Iran is in this position to bring stability in order to balance Israeli nuclear monopoly. Therefore, this is something uh, in contradiction, actually, with all the people, many people in the US, they say. The second issue, uh, you are right. Ayatollah Khamenei never trusted the US. However, to be realistic and fair, during 32 years of his leadership, he has given a green light almost to every administration to try. He gave green light to Rafsanjani to try on uh, with the US proposal, goodwill, begets goodwill, President Bush on hostages in Lebanon. He gave green light to Khatami on war on Afghanistan. He gave even Ahmadinejad when he, he freed the two American hikers. There was a proposal by American administration. He gave green light to Rouhani to go to JCPOA and to have direct negotiations. But the reality is that all failed because the US cheated. And in 2014, he publicly officially said, if there is a deal, and if the US would comply, we would be ready to negotiate on the other issues, disputed issues. The deal was done, Iran delivered, complied, and the US cheated. Then he said, no more. Therefore, if there is again a deal, I believe the most important issue would be whether the US would comply precisely or not. If yes, Time. maybe that would be a beginning of a new era. It's okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Marwan. Shukran jazeelan. I think the truth is that I'm going to talk about some issues that are going to be a problem and I think that some issues are tabled as if they are facts. Some issues are tabled as if they are facts. And uh, I think we need to uh, contemplate the matter. Uh, these issues are perhaps not factual. Uh, superpowers uh, do have problems with regional powers, uh, but we need to revise this. Uh, the United States of America at the time of the Shah had good relationship with uh, Iran. And I think uh, that the issue is nothing to do with uh, the sensitivity between a superpower and a regional power. So the detail lies, the devil lies in the detail. I think uh, that Iran has problems not only with the United States of America, but with other countries. Uh, and here we're not talking about uh, uh, the color of the skin, but we're talking about uh, policies. And uh, you said that uh, the issue between America and Iran is not ideological. If it is not ideological and it's nothing to do with racism or the color of the skin, then it is to do with interest and policies. As regards uh, the regional hegemony, uh, this raises uh, a number of questions. I think that the Iranians uh, want to live happily. And since 2017, the Iranians on a regular basis are, have been taken to the streets uh, and they have asked uh, the government uh, to perhaps uh, stop aiding uh, other countries and focus uh, on the internal affairs. Last, last uh, point. Uh, I think that if Iran becomes nuclear, 
from our own perspective, uh, this might uh, encourage uh, the Arab countries. And as you know, the Egyptians, the Iraqis, uh, they had uh, in the past uh, nuclear ambitions. And we all know that uh, Iranian is, the Iranians and the Israelis uh, cooperated to uh, obliterate uh, the Iraqis' uh, ambitions. Uh, I'm not saying that, uh, but uh, some scholars said that. So if Iran becomes nuclear, I think uh, Arab countries might follow suit. And as uh, Dr. Moussaouian said uh, and talked about uh, the uh, balance uh, between a nuclear Iran and a nuclear Israel, I think that the Arabs uh, might have a stake as well. And I think uh, that the Arabs uh, have uh, the uh, right uh, to have a nuclear weapon as well. I think Iran uh, is fighting its wars uh, on our soil. This uh, took place in Iraq, in Syria, and in Yemen. And if Iran becomes a nuclear weapon state, I think uh, that uh, the uh, uh, Arabs uh, might follow suit. The Turks as well. And perhaps uh, this is the reason why the United States of uh, America uh, wants uh, for the NPT to be uh, uh, entrenched in this uh, part of the world uh, so that the Arabs and the Turks uh, won't be able to get uh, uh, nuclear uh, weapons, neither Iran. Thank you. Uh, a follow-up with uh, what Dr. Marwan has said. I think that uh, the hegemon is not Iran, uh, it is Israel. And uh, the hegemon is uh, the country that uh, violates international law and gets away with that. Uh, it violates the international uh, law and uh, it gets away with it. Uh, Stephen Walt and John Mishamer uh, had uh, a book and they uh, wrote about uh, the Israeli lobby, a book uh, that uh, was published in 2007-2008, and it says that uh, the United States of America's uh, policy serves the Israelis uh, rather than the Americans themselves. And uh, I would like you to comment on this. Are we talking about uh, the American interest here when it comes to containing Iran, or are we talking about uh, the Israeli uh, interest? Karen uh, Hughes talked about uh, uh, also the Arab street uh, and how the Arabs uh, are anti-American when it comes to such uh, uh, issues. Thank you. Last question. Thank you all. Uh, my question is at this to Dr. Mahmoud. We do know that uh, the uh, Iranian uh, nuclear uh, program uh, started at the time of uh, Eisenhower uh, and uh, as far as uh, Israel uh, preemptive uh, uh, war is concerned and the Begin doctrine uh, the Iraqi nuclear uh, plant has been uh, attacked uh, out of the blue your question please uh, my question is uh, as follows what Iran has resorted to uh, just a year ago is it to do with the uh, uh, competition between the Israeli entity and Iran uh, as far as the uh, nuclear, nuclear technology is concerned? Or are we going to be witnessing uh, a real showdown between the two? The negotiations are the negotiators, uh, uh, the Western negotiators, are asking from Iran to uh, decrease uh, the enrichment uh, percentage. But I would like to ask you about the Israeli-Iranian kind of competition in this regard. Dr. Jodet, three minutes, albeit a, a number of uh, uh, First, questions. We have to keep in mind that 
Ayatollah Khamenei as the supreme leader with the, the tremendous power he has over foreign policy is over 80 years old and pe people in their 80s do not change their minds. Uh, people when they get older they are interested in their legacy and uh, become less flexible and this is human nature and so uh, uh, it, it, it is almost impossible that he will suddenly trust the United States. And uh, how to change the narrative? Uh, Iranian minority in the United States are by far the most successful minority in the US. And uh, unfortunately, uh, American media does not report on the success on normal things uh, Iran and Iranians do. Like, something great, uh, Iran won two Oscars. Uh, as far as I know, uh, deep in American culture, they respect uh, Iranian civilization. And how to transform this respecting Iranian civilization to accepting the Iranian government, it is a long process, but I believe think tanks, universities, uh, have to speak up and make this transition. Uh, lobbying is professional, it is not enough, just prof Professor Mehran Kamrava can write good piece, good book, but he is not professional lobbyist. It is like you, when you are sick, you go to a doctor and he or she describes medicine to you. Uh, Iran needs to, to hire professional lobbyists. Uh, there is... Uh, uh, to enforce the narrative that many Americans believe Iranians lie, in the nuclear deal there was the assumption that Iran will cheat, and this snap back sanctions. In the nuclear deal there was no assumption that U.S. will withdraw. There was no sanctions in the nuclear deal 2015 that uh, U.S. might withdraw. And the reason because the assumption that the Iranians lie, cheat, we cannot trust them. It was not balanced. Uh, there is continuity in Iranian foreign policy under the Shah. Till now, the Iranian program started under the Shah. The Shah had planned to get rid of all foreign powers from the region. The Shah had planned to establish Iran as the regional power. One last point. Uh, nuclear weapons do not uh, do not assure security. Israel was attacked in 1973. It had nuclear weapons. United States lost to Vietnam, and it had nuclear weapons. Soviet Union lost in Afghanistan. It had nuclear weapons. The Iranian leaders understand. Israel is now major regional power because of its drones, its missiles, not because of its nuclear weapons. Thank you. Shukran jazeelan, Dr. Bahjat. Dr. Mahmoud, ladayka thalat Please. Thank you, and uh, thank you for posing uh, your questions. Uh, Israel uh, has uh, aircrafts uh, that uh, provide fuel, but they are old, and they ask for new aircrafts uh, from America in order to help uh, launching any attack. As regards uh, the question posed by Amjad, would it be possible to, to coexist uh, with uh, nuclear Iran? This question has been addressed uh, since the 90s. Uh, books were authored uh, uh, to this effect. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, we can coexist uh, with uh, a nuclear Iran. Some studies uh, allude to the fact uh, that uh, Iran ought to communicate with the Israelis uh, to cross the T's and dot the I's. Uh, and uh, the main issue that relates to Israel is the monopoly over the nuclear 
weapons. Uh, and I disagree with Dr. Uh, Joe that uh, it's as if uh, we live in paradise on Earth, uh, as if uh, there are no confrontations, uh, as if there is uh, no occupation, no ethnic cleansing, no settlement, no attacks, uh, no so on and so forth. Uh, no, a nuclear uh, country is a prestigious country. And uh, indeed, uh, if a country has uh, a nuclear weapon, then uh, the people will be boastful about it. Uh, and they might become extremists. Uh, if you are strong, then you can do whatever you like. Uh, and you might become bellicose. You might have a bellicose kind of stance. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Jodet, uh, I think uh, if you could convince uh, Israel to relinquish uh, uh, its uh, nuclear weapon, that would be uh, 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 great. As regards to the nuclear uh, uh, weapons, I think uh, Israel understands that it cannot monopolize uh, the nuclear weapon for decades and decades. Uh, however, it uh, seeks relentlessly to invest in this period to dispense with uh, any possibility of a nuclear Iran. Iran in the 70s thought that Shah will stay in power forever. Uh, it had it all its own plans, but Israel indeed uh, is relentlessly pursuing the Judaization of uh, uh, Palestine in order to annex the Palestinian land, and this is central in its uh, policy. As far as the Iranian nuclear program is concerned, yes, it is at the top of its priority, but it has been utilized to portray the image of victimhood. And uh, if Iran acquires uh, or obtains a nuclear bomb, then it must pay the cost. Uh, but the issue is to do with Palestine. Palestine is uh, the sticking point here. Israel wants to Judaize uh, Palestine, and that's why they're focusing on the West Bank um, and uh, uh, Israel, I think, can coexist with uh, a nuclear Iran. And uh, uh, studies indeed uh, corroborate uh, that. They have the strategy of nuclear ambiguity. However, they can change this policy. They can change this uh, strategy. And uh, they perhaps might declare that they are capable of uh, attacking a new, and they can liaise with the Americans. Uh, but the, the main issue in my paper is as follows. Israel is exploiting the uh, Iranian nuclear dossier so that Iran becomes a bogeyman, albeit um, Iran commits uh, mistakes. Uh, uh, Iran, I think, must uh, uh, solve uh, the pending problems with the Arab world, but it commits mistakes. But this is not my, my, my this is not this subject matter here. Uh, what I want to say is that Israel wants uh, to portray Iran as a bogeyman uh, so that the Arabs uh, can be fearful of it. And I think that uh, Iran must, as soon as possible, reach an understanding with the Arabs. Uh, uh, just give me one minute. I'm, I'm about to finish. There are no contradictions between the Arabs and the Iranians. Uh, yes, there are some contentious issues that uh, are not intractable. They can be solved. So the Arab countries uh, must also understand this equation. And uh, they ought to arrive at uh, a joint kind of uh, work of action or action plan. But the main issue when it comes to Israel is the 14 million Palestinians. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud. Uh, there is one question through the social platforms, and it is in total agreement with Dr. Mahmoud's opinion that the U.S. intelligence and Israeli s circles agree that the revival of the uh, nuclear deal is the better option in order to contain Iran strategically. It is also in agreement with a comment I read days ago uh, written by Stephen Walt in a foreign policy article on 26 of July where he wrote, quoting the Tamir Bardo, the ex-Mossad leader, that Israel concerted efforts to convince Trump to withdraw from the nuclear deal was one of the most the gravest strategic mistakes since the establishment or the inception of Israel. This is a quote given by Stephen Walt, who is in close uh, contact and deep knowledge of the Israeli leaders, leadership. How do you comment in 30 seconds? It is very difficult to give you a comment in 30 seconds. However, at the end of the day, the bottom line is <coughs> there is a focal point with all respect to what has been said so far, which and I agree with. The approach or the strategy of Israel, then, since they have no options, the revival of the nuclear deal is at that point. However, they seek to bolster their position and to improve their condition in order to dictate, in order to exercise more pressure on Iran. Dr. Bajet, it is said that when Confidence is lost, it's very difficult to restore or to regain. As stated by, by Dr. Hussein, the United States uh, withdrew from the nuclear deal, and Iran's options are all laid on the table. Do you believe that Iran? will go ahead and obtain a nuclear weapon, a nuclear weapon, a nuclear bomb, and will this be tolerated by the United States? Yes, pursue their interest, and uh, at one point, Pakistan, Indian Pakistan, when they made the bomb, uh, sanctions were imposed on them, but because we had interest with them, we uh, normalized the relations with them. But I still believe Iran has no interest in making the bomb. Basically, it will not serve the national interests of Iran. And uh, one last point in 30 seconds, uh, the point that uh, the more the merrier, if uh, Iran makes the bomb, there will be balance of fear between Iran and Israel. This is one school, but uh, at the same time, I, I cannot see any scenario that Israeli leaders will give up the nuclear option now. They see the region is very unstable, and no Israeli politician can survive if he or she uh, agrees to give up the nuclear bomb, the nuclear arsenal Israel has. Thank you. Uh, شكراً جزيلاً Dr. Mahmoud, thank you so much for your uh, uh, patience and your attentiveness. Now it's time for a lunch break, and I'll see you back on 1.45, where the six